Welcome to the Living Fullness Podcast, where we talk all things life, virtue, and relationships. My name is Stina Constantine. And my name is Father Sean Burns. And each month, we welcome a guest on the show who will share one aspect of their Christian life that they've found helps them to live life to the full. Living Fullness Podcast. Every month we bring you a special guest, and uh, and so we have one with us this month uh, to tell us about uh, the ministry and work that she's doing. So, Stina, would you like to introduce our guest? I would love to. So today we have Tiana Williams here with us. She's a wife and a mother of two children and a sacred artist. She was born into a ministry family and began a career in graphic design at the age of sixteen which started a passion for bringing beauty to the church through the visual arts. Shortly after she was married in 2015, she picked up a brush and began painting a few portraits of the modern saints for her daughter's bedroom, which soon blossomed into a ministry of creating new and unique Catholic art. So all the way from Saskatchewan, Canada, Tiana Williams, welcome to the Living Fullness Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. To start with, Tiana, maybe we could ask you to just share kind of very briefly um, your journey of discovering sacred art and what kind of makes sacred art different to your everyday painting artwork that we might see in a gallery. Yeah, I never thought I would be a sacred artist. That wasn't really on my list of things I'd be someday when I was a kid. Um, I wanted to be a graphic designer like my mom because I knew. I could be home and run a business, which is actually what I did for 10 years. Um, It wasn't until shortly after I was married that I started painting again. And I really was not very good at first, but uh, (laughs) uh, I found out I was pregnant soon after we were married and I wanted to surprise my husband in a very special way. So I ran to the art store, grabbed some paints and a canvas, and I painted an image of pregnant Mary. And that's how Mm. I told my husband that I was pregnant. And (laughs) it came together just so quickly and beautifully. I was like, Hey, I wonder, I wonder if I could do more of these. So uh, shortly Mm. after that, I painted um, Pope St. John Paul II. And that as well came together very, very quickly. And I just kept going. I ended up painting a series for my daughter's bedroom. And from there, I just, yeah, I just kept going. And, uh, here I am today. <laughs> it so, sounds, I mean, when I hear you say that, I kind of, I'm trying to kind of picture myself what it would have looked like kind of watching you journey through that. For me, it sounds like such a big leap to go from graphic design to picking up a paintbrush, like the two very different ways mechanically to try and create. And yet, as I hear you tell the story, it almost sounds just so fluent, like it was second nature that you just accidentally stumbled upon. <laughs> It was I'm kind of that I'm not going to lie. It was scary. Actually, <laughs> the very first painting that I did, um, I didn't own any paints when I first started, except for I had a tube of gold paint and I think a tube of black paint. So I painted okay. this portrait of a woman kind of like looking over her shoulder and it was, it was so bad, but I, I wanted to experiment because this was paint I didn't care about <laughs> and it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. So I went and I got some cheap paints from, from the art store and um, it was, it was a big learning curve for sure, but it was interesting how my experience in graphic design really laid the groundwork for becoming a sacred mm. artist because oh. I I had years of digital painting that I had done and there's a lot you learn in the world of graphic design and even just like photoshopping images about light and color and composition and those mm. all landed really well to picking up painting. Mm. Uh-huh. I, I love artists. I love artists. And part of the reason that I love artists is that I can't do art. <laughs> like I, 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 I still, I know that my, uh, somewhere out there, my, my primary school art teacher still curses my name. Uh, and, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and, and I was, I was always terrible at it. Um, but I, I think there's, there's, there's something beautiful in sacred art that is different from, from every other kind of art. It's it it you know I, I can 
I can go into an art gallery and I can appreciate something that's 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 beautiful. But then when you see sacred art, it does hit differently. It 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 does it does sort of um certainly it moves my heart differently. Uh and maybe that's because of the the um you know the uh the spiritual life, the baptismal life, the the but it's 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 different and I'm just wondering if you can talk about from an artist's perspective, mm-hmm. how is what you're doing as a sacred artist, like between the picture that you drew with the, the woman looking over her shoulder, aside from the fact that you're going, okay, that was, that was, not, a good, uh, that was, that was not a good first draft <laughs> or something like that. But trust me, whatever, <laughs> believe me, it would be about 5,000 times uh, uh, better than anything I put together with a stick person with a little. Uh, but uh, the... Uh, what what was different aside from quality? What was different from the first picture that you drew versus what you're drawing now as as a sacred artist? Like how how are those 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 two things different, the, the secular and the sacred, in in terms of art? Yeah, well, I think all good art will contain within it something of the true good and beautiful. Um, I think that's just the nature of of good art, of beautiful art. But sacred art kind of goes to another level because it's created with the intent of guiding others deeper into prayer and devotion, right? So um, its subject, for one, is holy. It's holy people. It's God himself. It's angels. And it's created reverently. It's created with prayer. It's created in communication with God so that not only the artist in the process of creating it, but all people who come in contact with it Future, in the future will experience something of that communication and that relationship with God. Mm. And so, yeah, that is, that is the point and purpose of sacred art is that anyone who looks on it, anyone who takes, who spends time with it should recognize something of God within it and have their heart drawn heavenward. That's how I understand it at least. Mm. So there's, there's really a, um, it's kind of a missiological dimension here, isn't there? There's kind of a uh, a missionary aspect to what you do. Um, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because really very beautiful. I, I can create a painting with a certain aesthetic in mind and, um, you know, trying to get the facts right of, of a certain saint. But as long as I'm working with the Holy Spirit and allowing him to work in me, then he can do things with my art that I never even foresaw, right? Like people can see it and draw things from it that I could never have forced into it, right? And that's that's the beauty of working with God is he he has a much bigger plan in mind than we could ever dream of. Doesn't he what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. What does what does that process of discernment? Mm, research preparing like what does that look like for you um and how did you kind of come come to sit with this process that you have okay so i there's going to be a bit of a difference between personal pieces and commissioned pieces so Mm -hmm. a personal piece um at the moment i just kind of squeeze them in between commissions um and they're usually an image that has been sitting on my heart for months or even years it's just Either the concept just kind of grabbed me or, um, you know, that particular saint or scene is just kind of, yeah, it's grabbed my heart for a while. And um, I'll pray. Yeah, I'll pray about it for a long time. I'll create reference images. And then if there's no obstacles, essentially, to me creating it, then I'll Mm. move forward. And if the Holy Spirit is in it, then it'll just kind of flow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Commission pieces are a little bit different because someone else is bringing that piece to me so currently i'm working with ascension to create a gallery of saints and so they'll bring a saint to me and say hey we want this particular saint painted so that process is really interesting because i'm working with other people um but of Mm -hmm. course prayer is always a part of that um getting to know that saint i do research going into it so i know at least the basics of their life um who they were when they lived what was their spirituality what did they look like what did they wear um, all those kinds of things, um, but especially like getting to know their personality through prayer, getting asking for their intercession and, and developing a friendship with them, which the only mm. deepens as I paint them. Um, mm. The 
actual process of creating the image is a bit unique to me. I am not a gifted sketcher. (laughs) If you looked at my sketches, you would never know I was an artist. They're pretty bad. (laughs) But this is where my 10 years of graphic design really bore fruit that I didn't foresee because uh, in those years, I got really good at using Photoshop. So once I um, have a basic idea of how I want the painting to look, I dress up either myself or my husband or my sister, whoever I can grab, dress them up in a costume and take photos. I bring those photos into Photoshop, cut it out. I swap out their faces, change skin color, clothing color, change the background, and I make it look approximately how I want the painting to look. And this is super useful because I can bring that image to Ascension or whoever's commissioned um, the painting and say, this is what your painting is going to look like. Uh (laughs) And uh they can look at that and say, you know, that's great. Go for it. Or they can be like, "Eh, I don't love that pose or their face doesn't Uh look right. And I can keep tweaking that until we have an image that we both really love. And uh, from there, I sketch it out on my artboard and begin painting. Wow. Wow. That's such a modern way to do things. (laughs) Wow. Uh, thoroughly impressed. That's, that's actually really <laughs> awesome. What a good well, idea. It's, I yeah. find it interesting because the Lord could have given me the skill to draw, like sketch freely. Yeah. He gave it to my sister. She's an incredible ah. pencil artist, like super, super talented, but he didn't, but he did give me these other skills and these other tools. And I really struggled with that at first. I was really frustrated. Like, why? Why couldn't you make me more like, you know, the ancient masters? But um, I mean, he did place me in this time with these tools. And I think he's asking me to create a, a bridge between the old and the new. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's also kind of beautiful that you're able to bring in uh, your, your, your husband and family into your work in that way. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, all my, that's, I think yeah. almost all of my male saints have my husband's hands. He has very nice hands. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> that is so sweet. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's so lovely to see something generated from, because you, you mentioned um, building a bridge between the old and the new. Um, we, we kind of live in a world where, um, uh, you, you you can't quite know if the image you're seeing is real or not in in, in the sense of you know um, uh, Photoshop can kind of well, I don't know if it's Photoshop but computers can make things happen they can they can you can create an image just with artificial intelligence so um, uh, so it's 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 so wonderful that you you're able to bring in the human element. Uh, and, and and to to marry it with the uh, with the technological, um, you know, it's it's that's that's just marvelous. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's that's really exciting. Yeah, it, we live in an age that kind of either goes to one of two extremes: either we go yeah. all in with all the tech and kind of leave the human behind, or we idolize mm. the past and older methods. And right. I, at least in my own career, I think God is calling me to use the tools that I have, but use them wisely. So something like AI can definitely be abused. It's also extremely useful. Like, where am I going to find a stone chalice for St. Benedict? Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm also thinking, obviously, the, the work that you do has an impact on the people that either are, are asking you to, to create the work or the people who view the work that you do. I mean, I know when I've watched even like the time-lapse videos that you've shared online, I'm amazed by how, obviously, it's in truncated time form. So I'm sure there's hours and hours and hours and hours <laughs> that have gone into the work that you do. But yeah, it's believe extraordinary it or not, to I do watch not that. complete these paintings in three minutes. No, really? <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> But it's I extraordinary <laughs> to watch that progress happen um, and the different techniques that you're using and the different methods that you use to bring something to life. And you can see how much of your gifts and talents are coming through. And I'm hearing you talk about this is a very prayerful thing 
for you. It's, a, it's not just something that you're doing, um, you know, a bit of scribbling that you're doing here and there whilst your mind's occupied thinking about the dinner that you're going to create tonight or something. <laughs> you know, there's, there's dialogue that happens between you and God. So I'm, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if you feel comfortable sharing then what that kind of journey has done for you yourself as an artist. Um, given that this wasn't something that you initially had planned on doing, it's something you kind of discovered after being married. Have you noticed any shifts and changes in your own spiritual life and your own journey by becoming a sacred artist? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, God is always working in my heart and drawing me to depths that I didn't even realize were there. I think something that surprised me is, um, how much every saint has to teach us and how we can actually get to know each one. Um, that was one of the first things I realized when I started painting that series for my daughter's bedroom is um, like, for example, JP two came together in like two hours, very, very quickly, wow. super fun, you know, very in- enjoyable process. And then mm. other saints had something else completely different to teach me. <laughs> like mm. Saint Therese, I, I was distracted constantly through the whole thing my daughter just needed me and so I was like okay I guess this is the little way <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I and yeah I have yeah. found that with every saint that I paint that I'm I'm called to a different journey with them they have some some way they want to draw me into greater virtue and um it's always yeah really neat to see what that is and um um just in general, learning to be uh, more quiet and listening to the voice of the Lord, um, leaving space for him to speak. That's been a journey I've been on this past year in particular is just turning off the noise, <laughs> turning mm. off the, the videos in the background, getting off of social media and just leaving room for the father to speak and for him to point out the areas of my heart that are still hurting. that I didn't even realize were hurting. Mm. And uh, that's a work in progress. I have a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> it's a very tangible way that you speak of as well when you talk about the lessons that you're learning from the saints. Um, I think sometimes I can I can listen to people talk about that, and it sounds so distant. It sounds so or so in the head, um, like knowledge based, information based. But the way you speak about it, it's actually very very tangible shifts and changes and invitation from them to you. I think one of the most um, profound examples of this has, was when I did my painting of St. Josephine Bikita with Ascension. Uh, at the time that I started painting her was uh, right at the start of COVID. Right before I was supposed to start painting St. Josephine, I experienced a really awful miscarriage. We had been trying for a couple of years and this baby felt like a total miracle. And um, I, you know, barely found out I was pregnant before I lost this baby. And so I went into paint this painting of St. Josephine with that grief, very, very fresh. And one of the things I pay a lot of attention to in my paintings is their eyes. Um, trying to capture their humanity, but also the emotion of their story and what came to the surface as I was painting. St. Josephine was her loneliness that, you know, she had experienced such terrible suffering as a child, you know, being sold into slavery, being abused and being tortured, truly being taken from place to place and having no real grounding. And even eventually when she ended up in Italy as a, as a sister, being the only black woman in her convent would have been extremely lonely. And so as I'm painting this image, I can see in her eyes this grief, but also this hope that despite everything that she'd been through, she recognized that God was with her that whole time. And so I was able to bring my grief and my loneliness because no one was able to visit me because of COVID. Mm. And I was able to journey with her and experience her comfort and how she was leading me closer to the heart of the father. Mm. That was, that's a really special one. <laughs> yeah. Is this, wow. um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think back to the, uh, to the images that I've seen of your work. Um, is there two? 
Mm-hmm. Is it one? Yeah. So my very my first painting of Saint Josephine Bikita was a personal piece. That okay. was one that I I had wanted to paint for months and months, and then I had a few spare weeks, and I squeezed it in. And that's actually the one that Ascension saw and thought, ah, that's what we want for our series. That's that's the style that we want to go for. So uh-huh. um, the first one I painted for them was, again, St. Josephine Bikita, um, especially yeah. for their series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so the one you're speaking of now, is that the one, is that the first piece that you're speaking of? Uh, the second, actually. The second. Yeah. I, I wondered because I when I saw the series, and the photographs that came out of the series, there was something in Josephine Bikita that I was like, I don't, I don't know what it is, but for some reason I'm more drawn to this one than the others. And Martin de Porres was second, something about him that was drawing me as well. But there's just there's something in her that even when I look at them side by side, I go, why, <laughs> why is this one more striking in some way? I, I don't know what it is, but hearing you speak. And wow, okay, maybe there was a little bit more weight, um, more heaviness that went mm-hmm. into the work that you did with her, and and maybe there's a there's an you know a, a sense of a reflection of that coming out mm-hmm. yeah, that I we get to experience without knowing it. Totally, I I really do believe that um, the heart of the artist is embedded in every piece, and each mm-hmm. piece tells a story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for being vulnerable to do that, yeah. to, to share that with us and our, our community, but to pour that into your work. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, a gift. That is a gift. That is a gift. It's a gift from God to you and a gift that you've then shared to the, the uh, been, been, bold enough to cooperate and share with the world. And that's, that's, it's no small task. I mean, to put your, to wear your heart on your sleeve, so to speak, when you, you know, when you work and, and, and to, to, uh, to sort of put the cross as it has been manifested in your life, um, um, into your work, um, and to, to, um, allow God to use that um, according to His to His will and purposes, which is always is always good and always glorious. Um, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's really amazing. I, I feel like all the best art comes out of suffering. <laughs> mm-hmm. So He's letting me have lots of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um... You shared about Josephine Bikita. Are there any of your other works that stand out to you as being particularly special for you? Um, and is there anything that you're working on at the moment that you could share with us? Um, of piece in the pieces in the past, um, one that I've been thinking about lately was Saint Gianna Mola. Um, she was a mother and a working woman. And so that resonates deeply with me because I've really had to find the balance between being a mom and being a business owner, right? And to you know, live out my calling in both and to do it faithfully. And so I've, I've looked at her so many times over the years, um, the gentleness she had for her children, the passion she had for her work, um, the humility she had, the joy she had. I find her incredibly inspiring. Um, when I was praying about painting her, you know, I wasn't sure what to put in her hands because most of my paintings are holding some object. Mm. And I thought, well, maybe she'd be holding a stethoscope or one of her babies. That's usually what you see, right? And I was uh, driving somewhere late at night and praying about this out loud, as I sometimes do. And I just said, oh, maybe she'd be holding a bunch of white flowers. And I burst into tears. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> and I said, okay, maybe that's it. <laughs> so I kept wow. praying about that. And the Lord, the Lord revealed to me that the flowers she would be holding would be representative of all her acts of love throughout her life. And that some of them are really big and bold, like the lilies and the roses, you know, 
how did she come to be known, but the sacrifice of her life for her child, right? That's what she's most famous for. But um, sprinkled amongst them would be small hidden blossoms. And those would be all those small acts of love that no one really saw or noticed, but God saw and they're so Mm -hmm. precious to him. Mm -hmm. So in her arms, she's holding all these flowers, but in her one hand, she's holding one of these small blossoms. And uh, so that one, that one's very special to me. Um, Currently, I'm working on St. Benedict which you can see behind me here. (laughs) Um, This is my most recent piece in the Ascension series. Uh, He's one of those saints that I've always known about. I have a younger brother with the middle name Benedict. But I, in going into this painting, I had the opportunity to get to know him a bit more, get to know a little more about his spirituality and um, his life. Um, So in the painting, um, he's holding a shattered chalice, apparently, uh, his first attempt at <laughs> leading a monastery didn't go very well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other monks <laughs> uh, were not too happy with his strict rules, oh. and one of them tried to poison him. Um, but as he blessed mm-hmm. the cup, <laughs> it shattered. <laughs> and in the background <laughs> of the painting, you'll see um, the monastery that he founded, Mon- Monte Cassino. And also in the sky is a raven. And there's a few legends for that. I think probably the most truthful one was that he would feed a raven from his own dinner. I don't know if it's the same monk who tried to poison him, but um, apparently someone tried to poison his bread. (laughs) And um, somehow Benedict realized that the bread was poisoned, so he called the raven to him to take the bread away so that no one would be hurt. And I, yeah, so the raven is in the background, and that now is a symbol of God's providence and good timing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You were were talking before about... um... Yeah, so there's 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 something uh, sort of um, mission based, I suppose, in what you're doing, and 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 the way that you were speaking before about your process of sort of getting to know the saints and 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 sort of um, uh, speaking to God about your work. There's something deeply kind of um, uh, Marian about the manner you approach your art mm. um you know the, the the every time mary is faced with some some difficult moment or task in scripture one of the phrases that we so frequently hear is and she pondered these things in her heart and and, and i i kind of i have to be careful how i say this because it's it's it'll sound um uh, very um, toffee of me, um, but um, I, I detest that translation. Uh, it, it's sort of, it, it's, it's, you know, when, when we think about pondering, it's kind of like, gosh, I wonder what that was. That was weird, wasn't it? That was like pondering has such a, 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 um, a strange uh, sort of nothing connotation to it, but, but, the what 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 the Greek says is she dialogued. Mm. She dialogued about these things. She spoke to God about these things. And I, I think mm. the 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 way that you're doing your work then is is has this this sort of um, this Marian dialogue of okay something's something's happening here. You know I'm 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 feeling a movement here or I'm seeing something here and God I'm going to talk to you about that. And and that's a. a, a I think that that there has a real a real Marian um approach to it. It's really it's 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 moving and it's beautiful and it's it's got a, a, a and and naturally because it has a Marian approach, it therefore has this really ecclesiological, this very church centered approach where you're asking the uh the 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 saints to actually help you in your in in your work. You know, you you're I think that it's it's a um, what you're offering is is is, is effectively a, a holistic kind of art, um, mm. and it's it's the, the, your process fills me with a great sense of hope. Thank you for what you do. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that because anyone who follows my art closely will know that I never tire of painting or drawing Mary. <laughs> if usually if I have a gap between paintings, I'm drawing Mary. <laughs> Okay. So okay. I actually, I recently did an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which I'm hoping to launch. Oh. I'll just share that right here. 
Oh, <laughs> hello, sunshine. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I just never I never tire of painting her because I think there's just so much we can learn learn from our lady mm. and uh, so many ways that she comes to us as mother. And mm. so I mm. just I love depicting her and from so many different angles in so many different ways. You know, as as a nursing mother, as you know, as queen. And yeah, she's just so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. Um there's one thing that's sitting with me that you have to gain such intimacy with these saints for any given season. Like we, we all have that. We all have that opportunity. We all have that invitation. But I think there's he, the way you talk. It sounds like there's a there's a depth that you're able to receive because of your work and because the work that you do forces you to slow down, un- unlike other types of work that could be done in a quicker pace. Yours is much slower. So it, it kind of invites you into this slower pace, which I think you know, allows for meditation and reflection and prayer. And I, I just, yeah, I'm kind of just sitting with what, what a privilege it must be for you to have such a closeness and for these saints to almost mark certain seasons in your life. Like mm-hmm. I, I imagine you looking back on your life, you can say, well, this saint either taught me something or sat with me or I was able to be accompanied by this saint in this season of life. And what a beautiful way for you to, <laughs> to mark like your, your entire working life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is a privilege. It is, it's such a gift. Um, I, I have a, the kind of mind that's always bouncing around from idea to idea mm-hmm. and project to project. So like you said, be forced to, yeah. to slow down and, and to truly hyper focus <laughs> for hours at a time yeah. on this this one thing is yeah it's a gift but I mean it's something that I can share and I think that's that is the true privilege is that I get to journey with the saint and then I get to share it with you and you get to journey mm. with them too mm. yeah 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 what a gift yeah beautiful beautiful well firstly what would you say to anyone who's been inspired by your story or work, either as someone who wants to explore their gifts in artistry uh, or um, to financially support your work or purchase one of your, one of your paintings? Well, thank you for asking. Um, in regards to the first, um, you know, anyone who wants to explore their own artistry, I have people reach out to me all the time who are like, you know, I, I'd love to start painting, but I don't even know where to start. And my answer to them is always, well, just start. (laughs) When I started, I didn't know what I was doing and I was no good. Um, But I just started practicing and um, accepting criticism from those around me, accepting their encouragement, um, always learning, always growing, uh, looking to the masters and how, how they were able to capture so much beauty and striving for that degree of excellence as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, always being open to where the Lord might lead. Um, so that's something I'd encourage everyone because I think there is an artist within all of us. Not all of us are called to make sacred art, but all of us are called to bring something of God's beauty into this world. So whatever that is for you, just just start, <laughs> just start, <laughs> and ask the Holy Spirit into all of it, and and He'll lead you, He'll guide you. Um, for those who would like to follow my work and um, maybe support me. I am on social media at Sacred Art by Tiana and my website is sacredartbytiana.com. For those in Australia, um, (laughs) if you're interested in purchasing my art, you just have to reach out to me, um, shoot me an email through the contact form on my website. I'd be happy to um, get you some shipping quotes and get something sent your way. Thanks so much for taking the time to share your work and your gift with us Tiana. Mm-hmm. Thank Very you again for having me on. This was such a lovely peaceful conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs>
before we um, end the episode, we like to be able to do a bit of a truth, beauty, and goodness. So we might just do like take one each if that's okay. Um, Kiana, would you like to start? Was there a moment of truth, beauty, and goodness for you that you could share? Yeah, this is kind of a hard question to answer for this week. It was a bit of a tough week. I was sick in like three different ways. And last night was the worst of it. I was literally on the bathroom floor, like crying. <laughs> and in the midst of that pain, my husband came to me and he blessed me with holy oil. Sorry. Blessed me with holy oil and prayed over me. And um, he just sat with me and, you know, asked me to unite my suffering with Jesus on the cross. And that just yeah, touched me so deeply, his, his love for me and his faithfulness to me, my husband and, and Christ. <laughs> Yeah. Um, wow. Mine. <laughs> oh. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. What about you, Padre? Well, I've been in Sydney this week, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's been uh, um, a a week of trying to finish the thesis that will not end and possibly be the death of me, uh, but. Um, um, or the death of someone else, who knows? Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, the um, uh, it's it's trying to do multiple things at once is always difficult, and um, um, so running a cathedral uh, and trying to finish a thesis don't necessarily go hand in hand, and um, um. For I I was able to receive, which is it, it was it was just different because often when it comes to pastoral care, I'm I tend to be the person who's giving the pastoral care in any given relationship because that's my job. That's that's what I that's what I'm meant to do. That's why I exist. And um, um, the the so to to be in a a place where I was to receive pastoral care from my supervisor and my dean of studies was different it was different and uh and they they um gave me a, a couple of uh a couple of 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 things that i needed to hear and also some ways forward that were very very useful um but also made me go all right you know what i i need to um I need to look at this with with a, 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 a through the lens of Christ. I need that, I, I I need to, to to look at this work through the lens of Christ. And I need to uh, to to be aware that it's it's this isn't something that's meant to be um, uh, that's that's meant to to um, sort of make me say things like this is going to be the death of me or or uh, you know the death of someone else. That that it's it's. Uh, it's something that would is is you know that I'm I meant to be able to to offer to the Lord, uh, and uh, and 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 that was a that was a good reminder. Something I need to remind myself more constantly of, uh, and uh, and not just sort of passively be going along with the, the 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 difficulty that I might find myself in, but going all right. Well, um, here's here's some suffering. Here's some difficulty. Offer it up to the Lord, and and. And also, uh, you know, but all, with so that they offered that challenge, but then also within that challenge, um, how can we support you in that as well? So that was that was it was a very um, uh, a very welcome and different experience. I was very grateful for. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, beautiful. And yourself, Stina? Uh, for me, I was at a community event. This last week, um, as part of a community that I had a lot to do with, uh, and I just with everything that's been happening in my life as of late, I've had to kind of pull back um, for a bit, and so I was ready to kind of go back in and was fully prepared to just kind of hang out with two people that I bought tickets with to this event and just sort of be there and absorb it and leave. What I wasn't expecting was to meet so many people who would come over and say, oh, my goodness, I can't believe you're here. We haven't seen you in so long. And so, you know, great to see you. And how are you? And it was just this moment of recognizing, oh, that people noticed that I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't there. That, something about that is quite touching. 
but also just this care and compassion um, that people were able to offer because they, they'd heard about what was what had been happening. So they just kind of wanted to um, share that care and compassion. I think there was glimpses of that that I just felt like God was like, Stina, here, receive, like here, take it, take it all <laughs> from every angle, just absorb it all. So I walked away just feeling, um, just feeling loved, feeling loved by, mm. by the community. Yeah, that was mine for the week. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, again, thanks so much, Tiana, for joining us for this particular episode. We will share links in the, um, uh, what's the word? Social media? Description. No. Um, description. Thank you. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We will share links to Tiana's work in the description of this episode, both on YouTube and on any podcast streaming platform that you're using. So make sure you go and check out Tiana's work. Um, I know there's some time lapse videos even on YouTube as well that are worth watching. So go and go and have a look at that. Get in touch with Tiana if you'd like to purchase some of her work as well. But we will catch you all next time. And until then, Mel Bella and Brett. God bless. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoyed having our guest on the show as much as we did, please consider jumping over to Patreon and supporting the podcast. Your donation will help cover the costs of this podcast and give you access to some behind the scenes content with our guests to give you an even deeper insight into how they live a Christ-like life.